Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz and in today's video I have some wood and scrap wood DIYs for you. I think they are so much fun and if you love working with wood and other items and you have, you know, a saw and some nails, that you can definitely do these DIYs. So let's go ahead and jump on into them. So for this project, you are going to need a dowel, whatever size that you want. All of the sizes of the wood and all the measurements will be on the screen right here. So if you want to completely duplicate this, you can. But I just took some one by threes. I cut six pieces all to one size. I cut two to one size and then I took a one by two and cut two of the same size of those. Like you said, the measurements will be on the screen. And basically what I'm gonna do is just create a crate in this first little section right here. So I'm going to use a combination of some wood glue as well as some super glue gel wood glue, which I absolutely love. This was the first time that I tried it and this worked really, really well because I wanted to be able to work quick with this project and not have to wait forever to the, for the glue to dry. You could use hot glue and I do use a little bit of it in this video, but with hot glue, it tends to not go completely flat when you're putting pieces together and that drives me insane. So. To make it so that my pieces will lay flush together, I do prefer to use different glue and the super glue gave me a quick hold while the regular just wood glue is just giving me that long time hold. So I'm going to glue three out of those six pieces that were all the same size together and then I'm going to start gluing the other two that are those same size on the sides. You can see everything that I'm doing when I put my glue on. I make sure to hold it there for at least a minute so that the super glue has some time to set up and keep things in place. So I'm just going to glue all of my sides together. Like I said, starting with all of the same size pieces and then I'm going to go into my end pieces using more wood glue and super glue and attaching those to the ends of my crate. So this first part, really, really easy and simple just make a box. <laughs> That's really all you got to do. And if you want to use some nails, you definitely can, but I just prefer this method. It's easier for me, uh, easier just to put some glue on there rather than worrying about nails and a hammer and if the nail is going to go through the wood or if I'm going to hurt myself. <laughs> my husband wasn't home or else I would have had him help me but this worked perfectly. Now I'm gonna take my two one by twos and I measured the middle on those two ends right there. I'm gonna use my super glue and this time I'm gonna use my wood glue hot glue and I am going to set those on the sides in the middle. So just butting it right up there and I am going to hold that against there for another good minute to make sure the glue is all nice and adhered together. And the reason I used hot glue in this one is because I am going to put the dowel in between those two uh, one by twos and I wanted to make sure that it was extra secure on there. So I'm going to do that for both of those. Now with my dowel, what I originally wanted to do was to drill holes in these one by twos so that I could just push the dowel through the one by twos but I didn't have a drill bit that was big enough to fit this dowel. So in the end, I just added some super glue and put it right in between those one by twos, held it there for a good minute and a half, and then I did leave this entire thing alone overnight to completely cure and dry. Now for stain, I'm gonna go in with my Craftsmart stain in gray. They don't make this anymore, which makes me super, super sad. I'm on my last bottle of it and it's my absolute favorite water-based stain because it doesn't smell it's easy to clean off your fingers it dries extremely fast which is why I absolutely love it so I wanted to use it for this project I have it may as well use it get it all used up before it goes bad and I can't use it anymore so I'm just going to stain this entire piece. And then after it's all stained, I'm just gonna let it dry and then fill it with whatever you'd like. I put some books and some greenery, one of my little ceramic pitchers, really anything 
you want can go in there. Some vases full of flowers would be super, super gorgeous in here sitting on a table or a shelf. The sky is the limit. Whatever you want to put in here, you can. I think this piece turned out really, really cute and it was super fun to make. So for this one, I took a two by two piece of wood. I cut it down to size. I'll have the measurements here on the screen. And then I found a scrap piece of wood in my garage. I just cut that into a square. And then I also took one of Dollar Tree's square wood pieces that come in a pack of six. I drilled a hole through that thicker piece of scrap wood and I made a counter sink hole as well. And I am going to screw together that square piece of wood into my two by two. I did not get them completely straight, <laughs> which is driving me crazy, but in the end you can't really tell anyways. And I am just going to screw those together. I did end up taking that off and applying some wood glue because I wanted to make sure that it was nice and secure and it wasn't going to twist around at all. So I just screwed those two pieces together. Once that is all together, I'm gonna take some more wood glue and some of my wood glue hot glue and put it on the back of that scrap piece of wood and try to center it as best I can on the Dollar Tree wood square and get that all together, wait for it to dry. And then I am going to paint it using my Waverly chalk paint in white. Another thing that is no longer available unless you can find it at Hobby Lobby. I've heard rumors that they carry it there, but my Walmart is no longer carrying it. They are carrying the new chalk paint. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I did end up buying some. If you want me to test it out on video, let me know and I will definitely do a video where I only use that paint and kind of compare the two paints. And then I'm going to take this wood ring that I got in a pack from Amazon. I'm also going to paint that white. And then I'm going to distress my entire piece using some Waverly Wax and Antique. They also have some wax in that new Walmart uh, line <laughs> that they have in place of the Waverly paint. Haven't tried that one yet, but maybe I'll pick it up and try it. Let me know if you want me to. But I just slightly distressed the entire thing, distressed the wood ring, and then I also used some more of the gel super glue to glue my ring on top of my pole. And then I'm going to use one of these hooks that I got in a pack from Amazon, and I just used the little screws that came with it and screwed it right to the top. I actually really like these hooks because the hook part is pretty long, and these were relatively affordable for the amount that you got and I just think it's the perfect size. I grabbed a wreath that I purchased from Hobby Lobby, stuck it on there, and now I have this adorable wreath holder that you could put outside or you could put it on top of your kitchen cabinets, on a shelf, really anywhere. I just think this turned out super super cute. Today I am releasing our Oops All Gnomes DIY craft kits over on my website. I'll have my website linked down below. It's just more decal and decor.com. These are so much fun. You guys absolutely love the gnomes that I have come out with. They are my most popular item. They are a hit. <laughs> they are things that everybody orders a lot of. So I decided why not do a whole 10 piece gnome kit with all sorts of different kind of gnomes. You are gonna get holiday gnomes and seasonal gnomes. I just think they're so much fun. We have a little Valentine's gnome. We've got a summer gnome with his sunglasses and beach ball. I just think these are so much fun. So there is a whole 
10 piece kit for them. I am really, really excited. So these come unfinished for you to finish and put together yourself so they can look exactly the way that you want them to. And I have a couple different ways to purchase them. You can purchase them just in the 10 piece full kit and then they'll all be available for individual purchase as well so that you can get however many of the gnomes of one kind that you want. And yeah, I'm just really, really excited for these. Like I said, gnomes are my most popular item next to the trucks you guys have been loving them and i'm really excited to show you guys all the adorable gnomes that are in this kit so head on over to my website moredecalanddecor.com where you can pick up your own 10 piece gnome bundle and now let's jump on into the next diy for this diy i cut out some wood houses now they are not completely perfect the sides aren't exactly the same size, which is absolutely fine with me. I'm going to take my Craftsmart chalk paint in parchment. I'm going to paint all three of these little houses. And in fact, I didn't even measure how tall the houses were. I just used my miter saw and went to town and just cut three houses out. Really easy, nothing complicated about it. These are just cut out of two by fours. And then I got a Cricut Joy. I purchased it during Amazon Prime Day. I had really, really wanted one so that when I needed these easy, small projects, I didn't have to get out my Cricut Explore Air 2. This is just super, super simple. So all I'm doing is cutting out a stencil out of some removable vinyl. Using the Cricut Joy was seriously so easy. Uh, this was the very first time that I used it in this project and it was so, so simple. It even comes with a little mat for you if you don't have any of the smart vinyl, which I did not. So I just cut myself out a couple little decals. I'm going to reverse weed it, meaning I am going to take out everything where I want the paint to be. So exactly like a stencil, you have the space where you want to paint. I'm gonna take all of that out. I did that with all three of my decals and all I'm gonna do is take some transfer tape that I get from expressionsvinyl.com. It's my absolute favorite. I have tested out a ton of different transfer tape and this is my favorite by far. I always have them linked in my description box for you guys to check them out because I love it. And I use this same piece of transfer tape for all three of these decals so you can use it over and over and over again. Now I'm just going to place my decals on my houses, kind of centering them towards the bottom left hand side. And I just use my burnishing scraper tool from Cricut to get that on there, remove my transfer tape, and I did that with all three of my houses. Now I'm gonna go in with some of my black chalk paint and I'm gonna dab off the majority of it onto a piece of paper. Like I said, I wanted these houses to be really, really rustic. So I did not wanna cover the entire stencil perfectly. I wanted it to look like paint had been taken off or chipped off, weathered away. So I made sure to leave a lot of little white spots showing through the stencil. I'm gonna go through and weed out my stencil from all the little vinyl pieces. And that's all you gotta do. You could seal this with some Mod Podge if you want it. I didn't feel that was necessary, but I just removed all the vinyl and there you go. You have these really cute rustic houses. I think they're so much fun. They're simple yet I f they just add, I they just add an extra something to your decor. I just really thought these were fun and this cost me nothing. This was scrap wood that was in my garage for who knows how long. For this DIY, I grabbed three 5 eighths by 36 inches. They are square dowels. 
I picked them up from Lowe's and I cut them into 12 pieces. Four of them are going to be the same size and eight of them are going to be the same size. Again, measurements will be on the screen. I'm going to make a cute little lantern. This was super, super simple. So all I used was the Gorilla Gel Super Glue. I'm going to take one of my long pieces and one of my short pieces and I'm going to super glue those together right at the ends. And then I'm going to flip that piece over and super glue another Another one of those short pieces right to the other end of that long piece making sure they're going in the same direction you're gonna make a total of two of these pieces so just keep that in mind you want to do two of what I'm doing right here so then I'm gonna take another long piece and I'm going to super glue that to the other ends of my short piece hopefully this is all making sense you can definitely see what I'm doing here you can probably understand by watching it better than I'm explaining it. And then after I've got that done, I am going to take the rest of my short pieces and I'm gonna start gluing them to each corner of one of these pieces that I made. And then I'll take the other side that I made, just like the very first one. I will add some super glue to each of my shorter pieces and then I'll just take that side and lay it right on top. I did use some body force. <laughs> to hold it all down there and wait till it was pretty dry or until it's set up enough that I could leave it overnight to completely cure. This is what you will be left with and then I'm going to use that same Craftsmart stain in gray. Use whatever kind of stain you want. You could even make your own stain by mixing some water and paint and I'm just going to stain the entire thing as simple as that. Nothing fancy, just staining this one. Once it's all stained, I'm gonna take some rope that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna tie a knot towards the bottom and then I'll measure out how much rope I need. I'll cut off the excess, tie another knot, and then I'm just gonna use some hot glue to hot glue it to the sides of my lantern. And that's it for this DIY. You could definitely add a bottom to it, but I didn't find that that was necessary and for me it was not a big deal. I just added a candle in the middle, some lamb's ear, and that's all I did for this DIY. I think this would be so cute on a shelf or even outside on a table. I think that would be really adorable as well. I've always wanted to make one of these lanterns and I am contemplating making multiple in different sizes. So this was super easy and it turned out really, really cute. That's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed these. It's really fun to do something different besides Dollar Tree DIYs and to be able to utilize different materials. I have a whole box full of scrap wood in my garage and to be able to use some of that up and make it into really cute home decor is some of my absolute favorite things to do. Let me know what your favorite project was in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out our gnome bundle set over on my website. Make sure you guys subscribe before you leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one. Bye!